Good morning. Today I'll be presenting our study that looks at the use of incisional negative pressure wound therapy to reduce cervical site infections after complex incisional hernia repair. This study received no external sponsorship or funding, and I have nothing to disclose. My co-authors have disclosed the following conflicts. Patients who undergo incisional hernia repair are at high risk of wound complication. Together, these complications are called surgical site occurrences, and their incidence can range from 15 to 46 percent, depending on the patient's risk factors and the complexity of the case. After a complex hernia repair, the consequences of these wound complications can be devastating. Patients who develop a surgical site infection are at higher risk of hernia recurrence, and mesh infection, which is a feared complication, often requires long-term antibiotic therapy, protracted wound care, and possibly reoperation. Needless to say, these outcomes are costly and associated with poor quality of life. Several risk scores have been developed to predict SSI after incisional hernia repair. The modified hernia grading scale is a, is a modification of the ventral hernia working group grade that categorizes patients into three risk categories based on their presence of comorbidities or contamination. The ventral hernia risk score for SSI classifies patients into five strata based on the following risk factors. The use of mesh, performing a concomitant hernia repair, the creation of skin flaps, ASA class of three or greater, BMI greater than 40, and the wound class of four. Negative pressure wound therapy has been around since the 1990s, but only since the 2010s has the use of negative pressure wound therapy on closed incisions been proposed as a new way to prevent surgical site infection. There's at least two proprietary systems available and in clinical use today. In incisional hernia repair, the effectiveness of this technology has yet to be established. At our institution, a proprietary system uh, or negative pressure dressing has been available and used in, since 2018, the Provena Wound Management uh, System by KCI. And it's been left up to the surgeon to decide when to use it. And patients who are at the higher risk of wound complications have been most likely to receive the intervention. The objective of our study was to evaluate the effect of incisional negative pressure wound therapy on the incidence of SSI at 30 days after complex incisional hernia repair. We performed a retrospective matched cohort study of all patients undergoing complex incisional hernia repair at a single university hospital over a four-year period. Our primary outcome was incisional surgical site infection at 30 days, comparing incisional negative pressure wound therapy to standard sterile dressings. We defined incisional surgical site infections as those involving the skin subcutaneous tissue muscle or fascia of the incision. This definition is adapted from the CDC reporting guidelines and intra-abdominal or organ space infections were not included in our primary outcome. In a resource conscious setting, it's been left up to the surgeon to decide who receives negative pressure wound therapy and who does not. And surgeons have been more likely to use negative pressure wound therapy in patients at higher risk of surgical site infection. As a consequence, making a comparison between concurrent cases or even a direct before and after comparison is problematic. So we used course and exact matching to create two balanced groups. One group of patients who received Provena and another group of matched controls from before Provena was widely available. So our controls were patients whose surgeries were performed before October 2018 and who received standard sterile dressings, but probably would have received the intervention had it been available. Matching was based on age, sex, ASA, wound contamination, and surgical urgency. To account for bias left over after matching, we also performed a multiple logistic regression analysis. Overall, we identified 245 incisional ventral hernia repairs in the four-year period. To capture only complex repairs, we excluded those in which mesh was less than 15 by 9 centimeters. We excluded day surgeries and laparoscopic procedures. In all, 114 cases were used for matching, with 34 allocated to the, to the treatment group and 51 to the controls. Overall, the groups were well balanced with regards to the matching criteria. Mean age was 59, with a slight predominance of female patients and a median BMI of 31. Somewhat more patients in the treatment group had diabetes or smoking exposure in the year prior to their surgery. However, there are no active smokers in either group. All of the matched cases were elective repairs. Procedure durations were longer in the treatment group, which may have indicated more difficult or complex repairs. 
The techniques of component separation were also somewhat different between groups, likely due to a change in practice over time. This plot shows the trend in technique of component separation from 2016 to 2019, and we see a trend towards more posterior component separations in the more recent years. Mesh was used in 95% of cases. For the most part, ProGrip or composite mesh was used, and slowly resorbing mesh was used only rarely. Mesh placement of position was similar between the groups. Somewhat more patients had a prior hernia repair in the control group, while the presence of a stoma or the development of a new stoma was more common among those receiving negative pressure wound therapy. Subcutaneous skin flaps were more common in the treatment group, and this was also captured in SSI risk scores. Modified hernia grading scale was similar between groups. However, there were some differences when using the ventral hernia risk score for SSI, with patients from the treatment group populating some of the higher score categories. After adjusting for ventral hernia risk score for SSI, smoking exposure, and technique of component separation, negative pressure wound therapy was associated with a reduced incidence of incisional surgical site infection with an adjusted risk ratio of 0.36. And this was likely driven by a decreased incidence of deep surgical site infections at the level of muscle and fascia, with only 2.9% of patients receiving a negative pressure wound therapy developing this type of infection compared to 17% in the controls. As for other surgical site occurrences, there were no differences between groups. Similarly, the incidence of wound interventions were similar between groups. The length of stay was longer in the incisional negative pressure wound therapy group with a median of seven days compared to five. And this was likely explained by patients remaining in hospital for the duration of their negative pressure wound therapy. There were no significant differences in all complications in emergency department visits, readmissions at 30 days, or in mortality. Our study is limited by its retrospective and observational design, but it's strengthened by the use of a matched cohort analysis which helped to account for the use of provenas at the surgeon's discretion. This study is also limited by changes in operative technique, including a shift towards posterior component separation in more recent years. The loss to follow-up, which was 8%, is another possible limitation. Finally, we did not perform any cost evaluation. In conclusion, in patients undergoing complex incisional hernia repair, the use of incisional negative pressure wound therapy was associated with a lower incidence of surgical site infection. Future studies should focus on cost evaluations of this technology in this population. Thank you.